Hello, world, and welcome to Living the Dream Podcast. My name is Dina Beasley, and I am your host. Living the Dream is a place to come to learn, relax, be yourself, and just be free. My guest host, Andre Terrell, and I have a very special dedication today for the men and women of the armed forces. Seeing that it's Memorial Day, we want to give a special thanks out to those who are out there fighting and sacrificing for us. My first guest, Ms. Jean Pethune, is going to give us some insight on her role as an ex-Air Force Reserve. Our second guest was um, Miss Safari Windsor is the first, the very first queen of reality show. So y'all sit back, relax, and get ready to have some fun. Wow, Jean, thank you for being here. So do you mind if we get right into it? No, not at all. Good, okay. So tell me, what is the job of Air Force Reserves? So the Air Force Reserves supports the regular Air Force in fulfilling its national uh, security objectives by providing professionals in mission and critical roles. Okay. As a reservist, the one weekend a month that I served, I trained to prepare me in the event um, I was called up for deployment. And then yearly we deploy two weeks out the year to either a state or country and perform our specific duty full time to ensure we are ready. And during that time, not only do we perform our duty, but we, we do get to have a little, a little playtime and do some touring as well. Oh, so you do have playtime, but mostly your training and then getting yourself and mind ready and your skill set up in case you have to deploy and, and be on the front line. Is that right? Yes, that's, oh. that is correct. Wow. I commend you on that, girl. Now, how many years uh, were you in the reserves? So I served and retired after 22 years. Oh, and that's a while. If I had, yeah, 22 years is a, a lot of years of my life. And if I had the opportunity, I would definitely do it all over again. You would. Um, the, the experience and benefits serving my country, being a positive role model, the education, the travel. Of course, you miss being with your families, but I was living the dream. Living the dream. Okay, because you, I guess you went to a lot of different exotic places and, um, you know, just had a, a whole different lifestyle than a, a normal person would, right? Yes. So, Jean, uh, you're a very attractive lady, and I can't imagine what it would be like joining the service at a young age and being so attractive. As an attractive woman, what was it like then? With a, with, with a so you, you know, with a male dominant uh, service, definitely male dominant. Um, you had your uh, mentors, you know, your female mentors, which I was fortunate to have mm -hmm. a female mentor, and you 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 got a lot of attention, you know. Um, but <laughs> the the one good thing that came out of all of that attention is I actually got to meet my husband. When I was deployed during Desert Shield, Desert Storm at Warner Robins, Georgia Air Force Base. And um, he is also a veteran and served 20 years in the Air Force. And we have been happily married for 27 years and have two beautiful children. That's and, so uh, beautiful. That's... Thank you. And, you know, and being stationed together at some of the Air Force bases, we were known as the power couple. Oh, I like that. The power couple. Well, was known. I think you guys still are a power couple. <laughs> Just like the Beasleys, right? <laughs> well, if you say so, I'll take it. I'll take it. So, yes, you do have two beautiful kids, and I know them both, Richard and um, Croy. So, are they home now during this pandemic? They are. They are both here. We're happy to be able to spend quality time with them because they're both college students. So, yes. okay. They're both college students, and I know Croy is in Cali, and Richard just graduated, right? Right. He is uh, graduating from Georgia State University, and yes, Croy does attend the University of Southern California. Okay, so traveling, let's talk about that. Where are some of the places that you travel to? I know your, your, your daughter lives in Cali now, and she's traveled a lot doing her um, sports and things like that. But what about you? When you were in the service, where, where are some of the places that you visited? So we visited Germany, 
which mm -hmm. I love Germany. And it was cold during that time when we visited Germany. France, <laughs> yes. We actually lived in England for three years, uh, oh. which was a great experience because the children were born at that time and they were able to attend the schools there, the local schools. So that was a good experience for them. Um, you know, we visited, we went to places like Italy, Ireland, Scotland, you know, just, just a range of, of countries. So. Yeah, so you traveled throughout Europe. Yes. Yeah, yes. okay. And you said England, do you remember, mm -hmm. was it London or any other? So it was Fairfoot Air Force Base, which was about 40 miles outside of London. And we did go to London quite often. Can you speak we with there. a British accent? I don't think so, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> I love their accent. It's so, it's so it classic, is, right? It is, it is. Yeah. Okay, hey, Jean, this is so much fun. Um, and having it from a woman's perspective, you know, people generally interview male or men and this is fun getting all of this great information from you tell me what was one of the toughest things or um that you had to do or what had to learn what is one of the toughest one things that you had to learn so one of the toughest things i had to learn so as a reservist you had to qualify for m16 rifle with the m16 rifle Okay. And um, the way that process worked is you would go to the rifle range, you would get a safety briefing, and then you had to take apart the rifle and clean it and then put it back together. Wow. Now, just imagine all of those pieces and trying to remember how to put all of those pieces back together to, you know, and, and then go and, um, and qualify. Now, I did shoot marksmen. I qualified with no problem. But it was just the assembling and reassembling. And Dina, guess what? What? This is where being attractive worked to my benefit. Well, go ahead, girl. Tell the sister <laughs> about it. What happened? <laughs> because the instructor was able to help with putting oh. that wife back together. Wow. So, so. they were just like, um, excuse me, Miss Jean, are you okay? <laughs> and you said, like, well, no, I really need a little where bit. Where does this piece go? Where does this piece go? <laughs> You got to use what you got to get what you want. God <laughs> gave us some talents. He said, use them, right? Not that's abuse, right. but use. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, this is this has um, been really fantastic. I hate to wind it up, but um, we're going to have to. Uh, but, but what I'd like to know is, so what work do you do now? And are you living the dream? So... Um, I am still a civil servant. I am currently a lead budget analyst for Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, where oh, I manage a $650 million budget. Whoa, hold on. You manage a what? $650 million budget. Okay, girl. You're so, a bad yeah. sister. <laughs> and the benefit of that is when I was, one of the benefits that um, I obtained by being in the reserve was I obtained my master's degree in, um, in, you know, with a minor in accounting. And then I retired and now I'm at CDC. Um, I am living the dream. I'm blessed to have served our country, you know, um, pursue my career, enjoy traveling with my best friends, Dina. We had the greatest time in our last trip to Cartagena where we Ooh. took a dangerous boat ride. Oh girl. <laughs> I was scared as hell. <laughs> Those <laughs> waves were jumping up in my lap. <laughs> we didn't know how dangerous it was until we got to shore, right? Right, yes. They talked about it on the news saying one boat uh, capsized. That was crazy, but it was right. crazy it really fun. Was, it was a lot of fun. It lot was of fun. A lot and of you fun. know, I enjoyed the traveling with my husband as we watched our two beautiful children blossom into responsible adults. Wow. And what more can you ask for? I think I heard you mention once that you had some kind of badge or something about your rifle. Yes. Right? Um, you I, shot mark ago? I shot marksmanship with the M16. So you, you did what? I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. I shot marksmanship. I got a marksmanship uh, medal. Expert. expert for shooting expert. <laughs> With the your husband in the background? Yeah, he had to correct me. It's been so many years, you know. <laughs> oh, he's proud of his wife. She is an expert marksman. 
<laughs> Look out, world. So nobody better not run up in your crib, huh? That's right. <laughs> That's great. I mean, as a woman expert marksmanship, that, yay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm not going to, with you. <laughs> <laughs> I got your back. Just know I got your back. All right. I like that. That's good. This has been so much fun, Gina. Maybe you can join us again another time. You're like one of my favorites. And this has uh, been so easy to do with you because I know you so well, but you have so many hidden talents. And gosh, man, I'm, I'm so proud of you. I'm really appreciate you, you being a part of this. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And um you know, I just want to say thank you to all of our veterans and those on the front line for dedicating your, your lives to take care of us during this pandemic. Dina, thank you for having me. Live the dream. I am living the dream. And I just want to shout out to the uh, veterans as well. You know, Memorial Day is a commemorant of the men and women who have died while in the military servicing our country. And I'm so happy and proud to be an American. And I'm so grateful for everyone that's joined the services, fought, haven't fought, but are willing to give up their lives for the better of our country. Thank yes. you. Thank you. And stay safe. Stay safe and live the dream. Hey, I got Safari on Zoom with me. How you doing, Safari? I'm good, Dina. How are you? I'm great. It's been a minute since I've seen you, right? I know it has been a minute. It's been about, what, almost six, seven months since you've been out here? Yeah, maybe. Or was it over a year? No, yeah. no, no, because remember, we met up at one of Malik's games. I saw you. Oh, yeah. I remember that for sure. For yeah. Sure. And they won. Right. So, yeah, yeah, it did. So it's probably it's been a few months, but you look great. Thank you. You do as well. Thank you. You know, we can't let these young girls get anything on on us, can we? You know that. You know that's right. <laughs> so how you no, been? Right. How you been? I've been great. You know, dealing with the quarantine and dealing with all this new world stuff that's going on out here but other than that we've been great we just chilling you know refrigerator full you know and i've been eating a lot like everybody else <laughs> drinking a lot probably like everybody else <laughs> right and i'm surprised i don't have a, a cocktail in my hand now normally when i do my interviews i like to have a little something to drink but i've been so busy today and um i just haven't had time to take a breather what you sipping on <laughs> a little, um, just some red wine oh okay that's cool I need a glass of white wine I got a couple of producers my husband and my daughter Micah they you know help produce my show okay looks like Dre hey I'm Mikey coming. Micah I'm gonna let Dre in hold on a second okay hey okay. you gotta come down further to say hi hey <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> I can't see him Oh, well, he'll come back. So this is my podcast, Living the Dream. And what better person could I get to explain her dream than you? I mean, you've done so much in your life. You know, you're a, an actress, a writer, producer, a hairdresser. You know, you're a, a business owner. You do so much and it, it's fantastic. And I'm really proud of you. I know you just purchased a house in LA and you got your swimming pool going, man. Life is fantastic, huh? Life is wonderful. And it is like for you to be interviewing me, that's even more dope because you've seen the struggle. <laughs> right. You remember me calling you up in Atlanta talking about, Dina, what I'm going to do? Yeah. <laughs> but that was because you switched careers. You switched changes. You made a change, you know, and Hey, you've always been a, a shero of mine. You're so self-reliant and a, such a strong woman. And people, they don't know all the talents that you possess. You know, they don't know you as a writer, a business owner. Um, you know, all they know is what they see in public, which is acting, you know, a re reality show and stuff like that. But you're much deeper than that. And every time I t speak your name, 
I speak highly of you because you are very intelligent and you're a trendsetter and always have things going on. So how do you feel about those things? How do you, how do you feel about uh, your dream? How do you live it, Safari? Um, I would say the first thing on my list is I pray a lot. I have a lot of faith. So it's like a lot of times I don't see how things are going to end, but God will say, oh, you should go do this. And I'll be like, okay, God, I'm going to go do that. You know what I'm saying? So I live by faith and by uh, prayer. That's just what I do. And I'm not a specific religion because uh -huh. I believe that like all of them got pieces of the puzzle, but I do know there is a God. I know that for a physic. Right. So, so that's I. how I live my dream by faith. So when I say to myself, like, oh, you know, um, I want to produce or write something or, you know, do a um, whatever. I just jump into it full steam ahead. Like, you know, like the ocean. I just say, hey, this is what I want to do. I want to get to the other side of the ocean. I got to go through this ocean. No problem. I'm going to jump in. Oh, I didn't realize sharks was in here, but that's okay. I'm going to make friends <laughs> with the sharks and still get over here. I love that analogy. Yeah. You know, there are sharks out here, right? So, yeah, there are. So, that's a great analogy. And you do, you'll go jump into it, find out you need a life vest, you'll get it on the way, right? <laughs> you know, that's right. Or I might go to the bottom and come back up. But, whatever way, <laughs> I'll still get to the other side. <laughs> I know, I know. That's what I love about you, too, because I think you and I have that in common. We're going to get to where we, we want to be eventually, right? We do. We definitely have that in common, Dina. We yeah. definitely have that in common. That's why we've been so cool for all these years. <laughs> right, right. You know, I, I got to say Dre joined us, but um, it's hard to see him because he's got his light in the back, in back of him instead of in front of him. So it's difficult to see him. Um, that's better, Dre. So let me ask you another question. What was your first job as as a, a actress or just as a civilian? What was your first job? You gonna crack up? My actual first 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 job was a dating show. Okay, and it was called um what was it uh 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 damn it was an old ass dating show. Friends and uh, lovers. <laughs> Friends and huh? Lovers? Was it Friends and Lovers? No. The Dating no, Game? No, I did a show called Friends. The Dating Game. That <laughs> was my first on-air appearance. The Dating Game. Okay? Wow. I thought I was a, I thought I was Gabrielle Union because I was on the Dating Game. <laughs> well, you go, and then girl. The yeah, the second one was uh, Love Connection. Really? Love Connection. So, it's like my history has been dating games it's like i did the dating game i did love connection i did change of heart <laughs> i did fifth wheel <gasps> damn so yeah so i always been dating and i never find the date so yeah <laughs> yeah so why you why you think you never find a date what's up with that you're a beautiful lady I think because it's a show. I find a lot of dates in real life, but on TV, I just don't be the one, and they don't be the one, and it don't mesh. But in real life, I, you know, I'm pretty good. <laughs> right. You are. You, you're great. You're very entertaining and always got some popping. You know, you have this effervescent personality. It just bubbles over with excitement and love yeah oh that's good that's so sweet to hear that because i want to you know inspire people i want to be a loving person you know so therefore if you can see it then i guess i'm doing my job well the thing is my my model is see it believe it achieve, achieve it you know and this podcast is called living the dream and without those things you god damn it i'm sorry i broke a glass one of my <laughs> glasses uh, See, that's I why I got a cup. <laughs> my dog actually came by and, and knocked it over. Oh, yeah. I love him. <laughs> yeah. In fact, we got him from you, little champ. Come here, champ. You want to see him? Say hi. Yes. Champ, come here. Come here, Pooh. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come on. He doesn't want to get into that wine. Oh, he looks so cute. Yes. He looks so cute, champ. <laughs> oh, my God. Say hi, Granny. Say hi, Granny Mommy. Oh, 
because this is my daughter's job, my daughter's baby, so he's my grandson. So he he's your grand nephew or something. <laughs> he's like when it comes to those puppies, he's like my great 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 puppy. <laughs> oh well, I, I I can't follow all that. I don't I don't know that. Yeah. So, but um. <laughs> But he looks look so good. My dogs don't look good. I can't even put them on camera. Well, <laughs> don't worry about it. If he hadn't have been over here spilling my drink, then I wouldn't have put him on. But anyway, <laughs> we, have, we have Dre on the line. Dre, say hi to Safari. Hey, Safari. How you doing? Hey, Dre. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Hey, quick question. So, if you wasn't living your if you wasn't living your dream job right now, what would you be doing? Like what oh, other job would you be doing? You said if I wasn't living my dream job, would y'all? Hey, I can see you now. I can see you. Now. Okay. Hey, okay. If I wasn't if I wasn't living my dream job right now, my second dream job probably would be just a trophy trophy wife. I would just be somewhere laid up in my uh, <laughs> summer home. <laughs> yes. Feet picked up. You know what I'm saying? Shopping online. That would that would be another dream too. I think that's fantastic. I think there's an art to being a trophy wife, and I I think I know that art really well, even though I've never been one. But I, I think I could do that. <laughs> so so why don't you try apply for those jobs then and forget all the. I've been looking. <laughs> I've been putting in applications. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, but now, all jokes aside, I think um, one of the things I would love to do would probably to have my own production company, film and production company. And I think that um, that would be something that I would definitely want to do. And, you know, I'm going to do it. I'm right. going to do it. I don't know exactly the timeline, but that's something that I want to do. So I will do it. Well, you know, I did work with you on a production before you wrote, you wrote the series, uh, you got the funds together for it. You produced it, edited it. You did everything. And as a matter of fact, it was really, really great. And I was hoping that we'd get the opportunity to work together again. So if you have yes. something coming down the pipeline and you need somebody like me, then <laughs> Always need somebody like you, Dina. What are you talking about? Your personality is gonna blow it away. You know, always, always. But um, if I do have something coming down the pipeline, I don't know what it is right now, but I feel the energy of something being created because this is the time because we have nothing but time to create. So I definitely feel that energy. But the 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 way they have these travel things and these restrictions, restrictions you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, you I know, do. but hey, if there's a will, there's a way. So hey, who knows? Maybe we could do a uh, like a Brady Bunch type thing and stuff, and just do it online and make it crack. Well, you know, I'm I'm ready for it. Uh, I'm I'm ready for whatever's thrown out there at me. And you know, like I said, you are one of the most created, creative persons that I know. And I would love for people to see that side of you as well. Yeah. Me too. Me yeah. too. I definitely want to do that as well. So as a um as an uh, actress and entrepreneur, what is the um pivoting point in your life? Um the pivoting point in the sense of what made me go down this avenue opposed to a different avenue? Yeah, you so said you, you know, you started out on um the dating game and <laughs> you must have been okay. the baby. <laughs> uh, embryo, embryo, <laughs> a hot, a hot ant embryo. <laughs> right, and um, you know that was your first gig. That's amazing because as a, as a baby or embryo, you must have dreamt of being in show business like myself. You know exactly. And you know what, Dina? Too. A lot of people don't know is that um, I used to go to acting school. I went to acting school as a little kid. My dad and mom put me in there because they always thought that I was a great storyteller. And, you know, they called it a storyteller. I used to just be flat out lying, but I would drag <laughs> that story out. Right. <laughs> I would drag that story out. So my mom and them thought it would be great for me to be, you know, in acting classes. So I actually went to uh, an acting class uh, with this guy who was great. His name was Al Fan. And it was Al Fan's Theatrical Ensemble. And um, 
he would send us out on auditions and you know all different type of stuff so i would do that um as a youngster so that was like my first interest into um acting and i think like what you said going back to your uh question the pivoting point was i also used to be a rapper mm. and i actually had yeah i had a deal through motown so when really? i was like 16 years old yeah wow. so i was a good artist well i and heard so, daryl bugsby <laughs> oh really that's yeah great. you know i heard and, one of your raps uh about lip uh, lip chat what was it that rap that you did girl <laughs> yeah my lip chap is popping my lip chap is cool <laughs> all the kids rock it they carry it to school <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right. But it's like um what had happened was uh when Dr. Dre started his uh label Aftermath, he was looking for artists. So technically I was kind of on the roster but not officially signed to the label even though we were working together at the time. Mm -hmm. So there was a um ooh, excuse me. There was a, a producer that was doing a play called Food Stamps. <laughs> okay. And they needed a female rapper so i met with them they liked my energy and stuff and they hired me to play the character this female rapper which was basically just um a, a rap song that i was supposed to do basically but um, as we started rehearsals the uh director said hey i'm going to give you this script and i want you to go home read it and i want you to come back and audition so i was like okay he was like this is a bigger you know role than the one that we have you and i was like all right so i went home memorized everything i think it was like nine pages or something because i thought that's what you were supposed to do <laughs> right. i didn't know no better <laughs> so, so i came back the next day and i did the audition and people started crying wow so when they started crying i was like oh i like this feedback better than music because it's more instantaneous that you can make someone feel something like right then and there so Anyway, I ended up getting a part and ended up basically booting another girl out the way and she was feeling kind of some kind of way. Well, you've, you've, but, been, you've done that before. You've booted somebody oh, I've out done the way. It, <laughs> I've done it so many times, but I don't give a f care. <laughs> I don't care. You know what I'm saying? But I have done it and so right. But that was like my first taste of really like um, a full-fledged production because that uh, play ran for three months at the yeah. wilshire ebell so we were there for three months like you know every day thought we were gonna go on the bigger things but it didn't happen that's what plays you know whatever right but right. um yeah that was like my really first 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 like oh name on the marquee and you know all that kind of stuff showing off to my mom and stuff like look i did it well Dre, <laughs> Dre, i know you got a question but i want to piggyback off of what something safari said you know my father-in-law was my guest last week john beasley and he was talking about storytelling to be a good actor you should be a good storyteller as you said you're a good storyteller and then wow so before dre jumps in again i just want to ask you what was it like working with dr dre i've met him that's before, what but <laughs> mm -hmm. i couldn't hear you dre look i was gonna say look I was gonna ride off of that too with the, the Dr. Dre and the storyteller. And I'm like, Dina must be reading my mind. I'm like, okay. She said everything. Like, okay. I'm like, hey, slobbering. I think I'm slobbering over here and she's picking up my words or something. I was gonna say the same thing with Dr. Dre. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. I, so Dr. Dre is listening, and which he might be, most likely. If he's listening right now. What type of movie would you like to uh, play with Dr. Dre or in some type of series? That I think you guys will hook up to be a good combo. What would you like to say, what would you like to say to Dr. Dre to make this happen? What would I say to him? Um, yeah. I don't know what I would say to him. Let me think. Let me think. I would say Dre, come on, yo, you got billions, yo. You need to come on over to this <laughs> filmmaking. You know what I'm saying? You got billions, money again. Come on, yo. Come on, let's just do something. Because, I mean, even the time that I worked with him, you know what I'm saying? Now, let me tell you women. Trip, I'm going to tell you how I met Dre. Because since we were here to steal the story, I'm going to tell you how I met Dre. My homegirl, No No, right? My homegirl, No No, had met Dre. And she said, oh, Dre invited me to this barbecue or whatever. It's supposed to be like a kickback you know come through so i'm like all right let's go you know whatever right so 
we go to the little kickback over in um, Culver City and stuff. And it's a small little apartment or whatever. So we get there. So, right, because the whole thing is she's like, my homegirl rap. You know what I'm saying? So let me get her, you know, in contact with Dre. So we in there and stuff, right? And so it's like all the dudes are like in the kitchen. And all the ladies, we like in the living room. And so, right, so we just chopping it up. So I don't really smoke weed. Right, my homegirl smoke weed, so everybody's smoking weed. I'm sitting here, I'm trying to just sip a little bit because you know I want to be in my right head because I know you know something gonna go down and I don't want to be fucked up. Right, so anyway, it's taking a long time. We'd have been there like two, three hours, and they ain't came out the kitchen yet. Right, so I was like, forget it. She was like, girl, just hit this blunt, just chill, you know, because I don't know what's going on, but here, hit the blunt. So I hit the blunt. I'm high. I'm so high, right? So I'm sitting here. Now, all of a sudden, I'm high. Dre didn't want to come out the kitchen. So all the dudes come out the kitchen. Oh Dre. My God. Yeah, right? They all come out the kitchen. I'm sitting on like this little ottoman, right? So they come out the kitchen, and it's him and um, what's his name? Mike, that used to be like one of the execs over there, Aftermath, and some other dudes, some rapper dudes, and all these people. So they come out. So Dre walks up to me, right? He said, so you can rap, huh? I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, you think you better? <laughs> he said, you think you can fuck with Eve? You think you can fuck with I was like, yeah. Right? So then he's like, all right. He was like, rap then. Put, he's like, wait a minute, hold up. Put on the beat for us. So Mike goes over there. He puts on the beat, right? My whole girl looking at me. I'm looking at her. She was looking. <laughs> she put her head down. <laughs> Because she know I'm hot. I'm high as hell right now, right? And I'm like, oh. so I'm just like, God, please help me, please help me. And I can hear God say, I told you don't smoke no weed, but I'm like, oh, God. You're like God, but don't let me down. <laughs> right. So he puts on the beat. I wait. I get in it. Next thing you know, I jump in that shit, Dina, like fire. I start kicking it. I don't remember what I was saying right now. It's all right. I have to go back in my but I start flowing. The girls was like, yeah. yeah. Oh my so God. Some of the dudes did. You know, boy, like this. I seen him standing and he was just standing there. I was like, shut fuck it. I'm just keep going. I kept going. I stood <laughs> up on the chair and I kept going, right? right. He's like, all right, all right. He had to stop me. He said, all right, all right. Right. So then this dude comes up. I guess he wanted to be a rapper too. And he was like, oh, that was all good. He said, but wait a minute, put on another beat. Put on another beat. Oh so he my put God. On another beat. So this dude's gonna start battling, right? Right. Well, Before that was battle. the thing I was good at. That's what I was good at because I would think off the top of my head. Now right. mind you, I'm high though. Right. right. So I'm high, so my words right. are coming. But the next thing I know, God said, that's all right. Push me up, I started kicking it. Next time I seen Dre's head go like this, right? Boo just walked out the room. I said, Yeah, I got this. Next thing I know, Dre said, So, um, you got somewhere to live and stuff? You good? I was like, Nope, I don't have nowhere to live. <laughs> no, I have somewhere to live. <laughs> Driving a Range Rover at the time. I was like, No, I don't have anywhere. To live. I want to come live with you. I know, right? That, hey, that must so, have been when he was with Michelle Lay. Um, at this time, it was the beginning of aftermath. So I don't know where Michelle was, but yes, what go he ahead, girl. Do, go he ahead with this great story. He ahead. had apartments for all his artists. So the artists would stay in these apartments. He didn't stay there with you. The artists would stay in these apartments. You could just basically create. So by the time you get to the studio, you got rhymes, you got rhythm, you might even have a collab with somebody else. So I wanted to be in that creative atmosphere. It's not like I wanted to go jump on Dre's dick. Like, no. <laughs> I wanted to be in a creative atmosphere, right? So um, anyway, after that happened and everything like that, that's how I got on with Dre. I had to basically audition. I had to shut some dude down. I don't even know this dude's name. He never made it to the artist's apartment and he never was at the studio. So I don't know who that was. But well, wait yeah, a minute. I, Safari, yeah. you're going to freak out because I met Dre. I don't know. It had to be in the 80s or something. And I, I knew him through a bass player called Tony Green. And I know the artist's apartment you're talking about. It was a tri level. Um, was it tri level like three levels? Well, the ones, the ones that he had at this particular time were on Wilshire Boulevard, so it wasn't tri level, it was more like a um, like a sky rise, a high rise. Oh, a high okay. yeah, it was yeah. a high rise, yeah, because I met him, I went to his house, I was um, 
I had did a song with, you know, with the song Whoop, there it is. Whoop, yes. Whoop. Well, I did a Disney a song um, with Tony who played bass for them a while back. Cause it was, I think it was called Whoop, there it went. Something like that. And they took me to Dre's house. I met Misha Lay. They had, remember- Did you go to Calabasas? Yeah. Calabasas? Yeah, that house with the studio okay. and everything in it. Um, okay. I'd like to have a picture of that. Do you remember the twins, those dark-skinned girls? And they were, they were, uh, had straight long hair back in the day. They, they used uh -uh. to call them the Wrigley, the Wrigley's Gum Twins. Uh-uh. Y'all remember them? But I this remember was, them off the top of my head. This is when Nate Dogg them was just getting started and, and, and all and that. And I knew Nate Dogg. I knew Nate Dogg. Nate Dogg used to be one of my boyfriends. We used to go around dressed like each other. We used to dress. <laughs> wow. <laughs> dress like each other and go up to the studio and stuff when they had the studio in um, North Hollywood. Look. When, uh, when we get off this Zoom, you and I are gonna, we're going to have to talk because we may have been in the same area around the same time. You know, even yeah. though. 39, 40, I started young. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> we got some exactly. stuff. Exactly. I definitely remember those days. I definitely remember the days when um, Nate Dogg and them first started and Warren G and how they used to be at the studio over there in North Hollywood. Is that right? When um, Dre started Aftermath, the studio was on Ventura Boulevard across the street from the Rouse over in um, Studio City. Right, so right. Dre kind of, the reason why I think I didn't really stay on Aftermath is because we were supposed to do this thing with uh, MTV and everybody was supposed to be there. But my ass uh, didn't make it on time. <laughs> and after that, he was kind of like salty. So, you know, I guess he said she don't want it enough. And then I guess in my mind, I guess I, guess I didn't either because I would have made my ass do it on time if it was the right exactly. thing. Exactly, exactly. And exactly. back in the day, you know, they were doing it. If you weren't on then and there, you missed out, period. Oh, yeah. They were not yeah. chasing nobody. Yeah, it was, it was a different, definitely a different time. A definitely right. different time. Mm -hmm. Right. Good. So that's my uh, Dr. Dre story. That's and I think um, as far as pivoting, I think the pivoting point for me as far as um, career-wise was when I made the decision to um, basically, basically just go for it because it was like I always had problems finding agents, managers. It seemed like, you know, if I would listen to them, I wouldn't have any talent. So I just start doing things myself, going on Craigslist, going, you know, to different things. The internet changed the whole game for me. Yeah, for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Dre, how you doing, honey? I, I'm doing good. So I considered you a self-made safari. Huh? I consider you self-made because some people are not, some people are not like you. They're not self-made. And I, you know, that, that inspired, that's very, that's very inspiring to the listeners that you are self-made. You didn't wait for nobody giving you nothing. You made it yourself. That's what Thank I like. Thank you. Yeah. So that, Thank that's you, how I, it's yeah. like, I think, I think in this world, it's like, if you don't have, well, let me, let me put it a different way. When people don't see in you what you see in yourself, you have to say, fuck those people and just keep going because people don't necessarily see what you see. You get what I'm saying? So you have to say, I'm going to keep going. I see it and I know it's really there and I know it exists. So I'm going to keep going. Um, you know, I know a lot of people out here now that that's struggling and they like my son's girlfriend she's five seven and she's an instagram model beautiful make a lot of money so you're absolutely right but i guess the point i wanted to to share with you is that you have to find your market right yeah you and have to find your niche it's like i don't think that someone that's five three is going to be a runway model because it needs to be someone who has height now yes. that might change, you know, one day. Maybe they'll go towards the influencers and then next thing you know, you know, the whole game then changed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you never know. But for someone who can't sing and wants to be a singer, I would say for them to invest their own money in themselves and hey, let the world choose. Cause there's gonna be somebody that likes your unsinging self. That's there's gonna true. be somebody. 
somebody's not gonna, you know, somebody's gonna like it. So I say just go for it. Absolutely. No but matter don't what. ask somebody to put money into it until they see the see the vision. <laughs> Right. Absolutely. You know, and that's what I like to do. I like to motivate people and it's hard. You know, a lot of people come to me and they say, I can't do this or I'm trying to do this. Why are you trying? Just do it. You right. know, the universe will let you know what's going on, you know, and, and you have to, if you don't have confidence in yourself, then how do you expect anyone else to? That's the, you hit the nail on the head with that one, Dina. You definitely have to have your own form of confidence. Uh, confidence because there's a difference between confidence and you know uh conceit but you have to have confidence you have you definitely have to have confidence to do anything you can't even um basically do nothing without some confidence right and dre has a lot of confidence don't you dre but of course but of course i think i was born like this <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's right. You know, that's right, Dre. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. Go ahead, Dre. But, so, Safari, what would you say to the young listeners that's out there that's trying to pursue their dreams? Because right now is a time with this corona going on and everything, and they are stuck in their homes and stuck in their apartments and things like that. How can you inspire them to start living their dreams and to become a better them? Well, I would say, just like my mom said, um, I was talking to my mom the other day, and she said, right now, she thinks it's a magical time. Now, you know, a lot of people think it's like devastation, but my mom said, no, this is a magical time right now. So I would say those people that are in home or in their house, and they're thinking about their dreams and saying, oh, you know, I can't fulfill it right now. It depends on what your dreams is now. Probably if your dream is to be a, um <laughs> a, a astronaut or something, you might have to, you know, do something else to get ready for that because right now it's just a preparation. So whatever your dream is, prepare for it. If your dream is to be in college, prepare for it. There's so many things you can do online. You know what I'm saying? There's so many things you can do. Prepare. All you can do is prepare. Prepare yourself and, and jump out and do this shit. Do it. Right. Whatever it is. Pretty much you could do it from home. Well, this you is do it. this with this epidemic going, I mean um, pandemic going on. <laughs> Sorry, but the pandemic going on, it gives us time to realize who we are, what we want to do. And like you said, it gives you time to practice, to read, to, to hone in on your, your talents and see what it is that you want to do. So now is the time to slow down, get your mind together, get your faith together, get your motivation, your health, your, your life together. You know, there's no, we don't, we can't rush right now because what are we rushing to? And the other great thing that I've learned about this is that it put us all on the same level. Shit, I'm not working, you're not working, he's not working, nobody's working. I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. working, but okay. okay, I'm working too. But you know <laughs> what I'm saying. You are working, look, yes. you're on the podcast. <laughs> yes, the majority of uh, um, people have time to, to hone in on what they really want to do. We only have a short uh, amount of time left. So, Safari, is there anything you want to share with us? I know you have a foundation. Why don't you tell us about your foundation? Well, basically, I started a foundation called the Developmental Foundation, and it's for um, young adults and adults who are developmentally disabled. Um, I saw uh, basically a space where I could fit in that I think is gonna be a good thing for everyone involved, especially um, the clients that we will be seeing. And it's basically a, um, a lifestyle change, is to give them hope and to do other things than just you know what I had saw had been going on. And I basically got the inspiration because my daughter is developmentally disabled. So I've been dealing with her throughout the years and I've seen the different, um, the lack of some things. So I feel like I could fill that void. So I'm still in the process of getting the website designed. I have someone that's working on that. Um, but I have been talking to other different people that are like-minded to, you know, join up. And that's something that is really close to me. Well, definitely let me know on the developments of that and let me know if there's anything that we can do, you know, because we have our own foundation as well, MB5 Foundation and My Heart to Heart Foundation. But, um, you know, we all, like you said, we always got to help each other and, 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 you know, make things work. But also, why don't you talk about lip chat, baby? 
Okay, so let's talk about lip chat. <laughs> oh, there's somebody's lip chat. Mm -hmm. Open it up, girl. Open it up. It's like, let me try to open it by holding the phone and opening it at the same time. Let me see my name. My... Oh. <laughs> wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. So That's the I, commercial right there. Okay. Yeah. This Ooh. is the strawberry. Uh-huh. And it basically keeps your lips really smooth and moisturized. Right. So um, I have strawberry, watermelon, uh -huh. tangerine, tangerine, and peppermint. And um, they're really good. They're, I mean, I went into a lot of thought trying to uh get this together because i've always been a lip balm fanatic you right. know i've always it's like always you know but there weren't any that i felt were really up to my what i wanted you know what i mean and of course a lot of people know me from lip chat from offering someone on flavor of love some lip chat you know I what i'm saying because that. yeah her lips was crusty as hell. It was kind of like a peace offering. <laughs> and this was what? <laughs> crusty as hell. <laughs> yeah, she had been talking too much. You know what I'm saying? And, right. You know, after getting a little roughed up, her lips just looked a little unmoist, you know? So a lot of people know me from that. But it has done so well. I just relaunched the new design. Yeah. Because this is a new design. And for people that don't know, Lip Chap has been around since 2009. Right. So this isn't a new product. We've been around, but it is a new design, as you can see. New flavors. But um, I'm definitely going to expand and grow even more because it's definitely one of, a passion of mine. So, well, yeah. well, that's great. You know, I ordered six of them. I got two different packages that came. I gave away three of them, and my daughter, she takes them in her car and never come back with them. So I only have one left. And I'm going to have to order some more. Yes, you definitely have to do that. I'll send you so some more. For tell sure. us right now with how to order it, um, Safari's Lip Chat. Okay, so you can get Safari's Lip Chat at safarislipchat.com. And that's spelled S-A-A-P-H-Y-R-I-S-L-I-P-C-H-A-P.com. So you can definitely go on there and go out. And you can go on my Instagram, too, which is the same as my name. It's Safari, S-A-A-P-H-Y-R-I. And you can click the link in my bio, so that'll make it easy for you, too. Okay, listen. So I only have a couple of minutes left, but, okay. but I do like to play a little game with my guests. Are you okay. willing to play a little game with Dre? Oh, Ooh. yeah. Okay, yes, so it's called Who Knows Best, right? Who Knows okay. Best. Okay. So it's a question. And the answer, whoever gives the best answer or the most popular answer is the winner. So you can just, I'm not going to say who can go first, but if you know the answer, just blurt it out and I can tell you who goes first. So okay. the first question is, name a fruit you might eat in the morning. Grapefruit. Banana. Banana <laughs> is the number one answer. Uh -huh. Grapefruit is the second answer. Okay. And the third number one answer is strawberry. Name a reason you might be late for work traffic Dress. you said what dre getting dressed no traffic is the number one answer and you woke up too late and car trouble is the third one all okay. right now this is the thousand dollar question uh question okay okay <laughs> oh wait a minute uh oh i'm gonna switch that one it was a little biased because it was about acting so, okay, <laughs> name an important number people memorize. Address. Their, their birthday. Social security number. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what was your first answer, Safari? Address. And yours, Drake? Bir birthday. Neither one of those are on here. So what's your next one? Go. Social security number. Dre? Your age. Okay, the number one answer is phone number, social security number, driver's license, debit card, and bank routing. So I would think on this one, Safari won, Dre. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> so we got less than a minute. So Safari, can you tell them, can you just say, you guys, 
go ahead and just live your dream or something pertaining to that. I want everybody out there to, first of all, listen to Dina. Second of all, <laughs> live your dream. Live yes. the dream. Dre? I say be a dream chaser and chase after your dreams. Keep living your dreams. I say be a dream catcher. <laughs> and keep living the dream, baby. And on that note, I'm going to have to say good night. Goodbye. See you later. Sayonara. Um, I'll tell stop. Lip chat. <laughs> <laughs> Safari's lip chat. Thank you, Safari. You've been a wonderful, amazing, fun guest. I appreciate you taking the time out. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Bye, Dre. Thank you, Dre. Bye, Dre. Awesome. Well, okay, guys, that's Bye. the show for today. I'd like to thank my special guests, Jean Pathoon and Safari Windsor, for joining me. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dina Beasley, and watch the interview live. Until then, keep living the dream. Bye.